not from a stack, but say from a truck or from a um, And they also don't require uh, monitoring for PM 2.5, which is um, more dangerous than PM 10 because of its smaller size and uh, greater ability to uh, penetrate deeper into the box. Again, Ethan, I generally a future dust control plan is required, generally, not always. But DNR usually says, what are you going to do to suppress the dust? Wet down the, the piles, pave the roads, and close this. So there's a, a general description of that, so I want to make sure that's part of the permit general. But the argument is always, in my estimation, you can't water in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and these things are going all year. Well, that's the right now not all of them are, are functioning. Some of them have closed because of the lesser demand. But you know, th that's the premise that they will run 24/7 365. Hmm. Um, here's a, a screen grab of one of the air mod uh, models used uh, to predict um, uh, particulate matter concentration from um, a practicing facility. Um, you can see that at the very center would be uh, the facility and then uh, the particulate matter radiating off uh, towards what looks to be um, residential areas uh, and areas of concern like complex and homes or uh, schools. So, you, yeah, sorry. you all saw this uh, picture, or this slide earlier from the EOG site, and you were going to say something about it. Yeah, I just want to point out we go back to the previous one. What DNR typically does is when we write a permit and say, what's coming out of the stack to heat up the sand, to dry the sand, for example? This is what DNR does. That's, these are the impacts. But when we go to the next slide, when we include the fugitive dust sources, the trucks, uh, the, the, the roadways, then we get a, quite a different picture. And that's one of our, our ways, when I've been very critical of DNR, you need to include all the sources of fine particulates and silica, not just what comes out of the stack. And their response to me has been, well, it's difficult to do. And it kind of is, right? We're, EPA is used to uh, calculating stuff out of a stack, but not over a big road bed or a truck traffic line. So it is difficult, but it needs to be done in our estimation. It needs to be included. <coughs> Why is it from the University of Iowa? We have colleagues there. They actually have loaned us a couple pieces of equipment. And they're also doing monitoring as well. Up here? Yeah, they're actually sending some of their equipment and students in. Nice. Yeah, up oh. here. I but know they have Fraxan's lines too in Iowa, right? They do. They're very few. Wisconsin is Fraxan Central mine, but uh -huh. we really are. Yeah. So our hypothesis is that the data collected from our EPA instruments will contribute, uh, will, will continue to reflect concerns associated with airborne PM 2.5 levels. Uh, here's a picture of us at our Bloomer facility um, monitoring um, uh, the air quality with um, two of our uh, dichotomous air, fil uh, air filters. And in the background is, um, is that the Chippewa Sands? Yes. Yeah, Chippewa Sands facility. Um, and it's uh, pretty dramatic seeing um, these giant piles of sand right behind you. It's a little 